Hello, welcome to Floyd Models Daily Vlog. Here we are on the 21st of April 2016. And being Thursday, it's technically review day, but if I'm honest, I only did one review. Um, so we've done the rocket glue, we speak about that, because I was doing the yellow banding work down here on the actual Halifax, which is coming together really nicely. And we are to that stage, which I absolutely love, because technically this is just as would be die cast or everything else. This is where we go to town, okay? We can really weather it. We've done a basic weathering job with the paint, faded it a little bit, bits and pieces, done the underside, things like that, but this is where we can really go in there. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna get really stuck in with this one, load up the old airbrush, do some squiggles and bits and pieces to break up the paintwork all over it, then we can get in there with chipping. So with the chipping on something of this scale especially, you want to use a very dull color. You don't wanna use bright silvers because they just look fake, okay? So we go in there, down there with your very dull aluminiums, things like that, just to sort of give that impression of wear and tear all over it, and then obviously going completely to town. So we're gonna be putting on washes and various things. But first of all, we need to do the decals as well. So what we're going to do, gloss coat on this in a moment, decal it, and then obviously tomorrow we can come in and we can then start on the weathering and the bits and pieces like that. But generally into that place where we are a lot of fun. So it's doing that and banding the identification yellow on it is a complete nightmare because it just takes forever. A couple of little touch-ups we need to do to fix it on it as well, but we do that during the weathering process. But just having to mask it all and go round, but I tend to prefer doing it now than before because I've so many times I've peeled back the mask in and it's gone wrong or it's out of position it's easier to do it this way so anyway that's what I was doing this morning this afternoon I was popping on with this stuff now I've had it kicking around a while to be honest couple of weeks it was mentioned in the forum so I went out and got a bottle and put it on test and today I've done a sort of versus with your normal sort of crystal clears and glues and everything else like that so what we've actually got is We've used it in a couple of places, but this is rocket glue. Okay, so this is the stuff we're actually talking about. It's a PVA glue, uh, water-based and all the rest of it, so it's not a nasty one, but if you can see in here, very, very thin. It's not like your standard, you know, your thick ones, you've got like Microsoul and your normal PVA glues, which don't move at all. Okay, this is actually a nice liquid one. So actually what we did, we've done windows with it. So hopefully you can see it in the light down here. We've done all the windows and we've done these back ones. Okay, so it's very straightforward. So I've got a little clip here from the, the actual show itself. Now this is actually me putting it in and showing you how I actually do it. And because this is pre-thinned, if you like, it means it goes in there very, very easy. Just literally go along, tap it on the cocktail stick and you can actually go in, look and just run it around the corners and up to all the edges and away you go. Now I traditionally do it with the other glue and I don't know if you can see it in there, I think it's a close up in a minute, but you'll see that the first two windows on those is actually crystal clear. Okay, so it's obviously uh, the thicker stuff you can see there on top of the pot, the one on the right just moving there. So this is just a close up of how easy it is to do it. Now the reason I love doing this is one, you don't have to worry about windows and masking them and all the rest of it and you can just come in afterwards and do it very basically just like that. And hopefully you can see, there you go, slightly better angle than the one I did. Okay, you can see the before and after effects with it all, okay? So it is very, very straightforward, no problem at all with it. You can literally just flick through. And as you can see there, the first two being the thicker white glue and then obviously the thinner at the back. Okay, and that worked really, really well, to be honest. Go and see the video and you'll see me doing all about windows and I talk about how I do it and all the rest of it. The other thing you see, which I haven't shown, um, is this guy. Okay, so this is the Halifax. And I did say I'll go back to it, but we did these windows with it as well. And to be honest, these have come out really, really well. The only thing is, and I don't know how well the camera, and if I can get it to drop down without blurring too much, because I don't want to lose it. Come on, blocking camera, because obviously it's a little bit high. I don't know if you can see, but generally there looks to be, um, sorry, don't know if you can see, but you know when you look into a vase and where the glass blowers cut the glass off the bottom, each of them look like a little pinprick right at the very, very bottom. Okay, which isn't a problem, par se, uh, because of this scale. So it's very, very small scale. And to be honest, you can't really see it on these windows. They are that small. But it is the difference because crystal clear doesn't do it. Okay, so this is the thing with this glue. As I say, go and see the review and you'll see the full thing about it. But it's 
brilliant at everything else. It's great for using Photo Etch. We talk about Photo Etch, you'll see it in the review as well. Strong as nails, and this stuff, once it is on, it really is on. It's almost, you know, we, it will ping off, it's like super glue. Eventually it cracks and gives way, but until then it has got a hell of a lot of bite to it. More bite than Crystal Clear, your standard PVAs or your Gator glues, things like that. To be, might be honest, I think it's got the best bite of them all. But for glass work, not perfect. Now, hopefully, if you were using it like I would technically use it for zipping around the edges of canopies, things like that, and they'd be put it on. The great thing about it, I'm thinking with this one is because it's a thin, I would actually get it locked in place, tape it into place, or rubber band the actual canopy into place, or a clamp. Then I would actually get this glue and I would tap it and let the capillary action work all the way around the edge of it. My only thing is, is it going to shrink back too much? Because that's what I tend to do with your normal um, micro sole sorry uh, micro crystal clear um, I tend to go around with it like that and it acts like a filler as well and pack it out if you've got any gaps I'm not sure this would because it's thinner it's coming in but in all the other tests we did with it and to be honest I stuck just uh, normal styrene together some styrene sheet I've stuck obviously cardboard paper various other things it works on absolute treat the other thing as well if you can see it down here um, this is the cuts as you saw them down on there. And as you can see, this one is crystal clear. And to be honest, I peeled it off. It was down here, there we go. That's the little drip that was on top. So you could make up headlights with it if you wanted to. But as you can see, it is clear and it's all dry. This is still drying and wet. So the great thing about that stuff as well is that it does dry extremely quickly. It's not not like you know some of them that are out there which take forever. You know I think the actual um, crystal clear isn't too bad. That dries quite quickly compared with some of them, but compared to that stuff, it's brilliant. But again, it's very thin. It dries, it's clear, it's everything you could want with a glue. I'm just a little bit worried about that puckering up the fishbowl effect, or whatever you're going to call it, uh, vase effect. But generally, I think for this type of work, for modelling, for what we do for our crafts, it could be a pretty good one to have in your drawer, in your armoury. As I say, just I might use something like that for normal windows. Okay, so there we go. Anyway, the review for that is up now. It's around about 15 minutes, and uh, you can go off and watch that right now. Okay, the other thing as well, obviously on Saturday, me and Steve are back with our Saturday morning live show. Uh, hopefully we'll have it all sorted out with the Skype problems and everything else that runs with it like that. Uh, obviously I'm working on the helicopter, we're doing this bad boy. So we've got this one um, that I'm working on, which is not sounding brilliant. I should have picked it up like that. Okay, so it's all fallen about. To be honest, I haven't done any more than you actually saw on the show. So I'm going to have to play catch up because Steve, he's already for paint on the inside of here. So I'm going to have to zip through with mine uh, tonight or tomorrow night or something before we go live. And I'll get that one sorted so we can go through it. All right. But it is paint week. So we're talking about paint. So tomorrow what I'm going to do is I'm doing a special on loading up your airbrush, how to use your paint, your various things like that. I've got a review for you of various types of um, paintbrushes. So I've got some medium price. They're not the cheapest ones on the planet, but they're not gonna break the bank. They're not like, you know, Windsor, you know, Series 7s and things like that. Uh, but these are pretty good, okay? So I thought we'd have a look at those, and then we're gonna talk about cleaning out your airbrush as well. So we're gonna have little 15 minute videos tomorrow with the, obviously the review on brushes and various things as well to keep you up to speed, okay? And then on Saturday, we're gonna be spraying as well. So Steve's gonna be doing the inside of his, I'm gonna do the inside of mine. So if you've got any questions, various bits and pieces on loading up paint, mixing paint for airbrushing and everything else like that, then give us a shout. We'll try and answer as many of your questions as we can during the show. So that's about it for me today. Thank you for joining me and we'll catch you all tomorrow.